The Australopithecus, Presentation and Characteristics of Their Time The word Australopithecus comes from the Latin Australis, which means from the south, and from the Greek Pithikos which means monkey. It is an extinct genus of hominid primates that inhabited Africa in a period ranging from 3.9 million years to 2 million years ago, whose main common characteristic is that they moved bipedally. To have the concepts clear and not to get lost with the terms, we will say that the word primates comes from Latin, primas which means first and refers specifically to an order of placental mammals to which humans and their closest relatives belong, while the word hominids also from Latin hominidae, refers to a family of primates that include four genera and eight living species, among which are humans, orangutans, chimpanzees, gorillas and bonobos. The climatic conditions in which the Australopithecus lived are situated in the context of the Zanclians period from the Lower Pliocene to the Gelasians period from the Lower Pleistocene. The Zanclian or Zanclian or Zanclian is the lower age and floor of the Pliocene epoch and series and extends from 5.3 million years to 3.6 million years, which is characterized by the so-called Zanclian flood or deluge. This is a theorized flood that could have filled the Mediterranean basin, this flood reconnected the Mediterranean Sea with the Atlantic Ocean. Sea level rise in the Mediterranean may have reached velocities in excess of 10 meters per day, based on erosional features preserved to this day beneath the Pliocene sediment. The Zanclidean flood created the Strait of Gibraltar, which prevented animals from crossing between Africa and Europe. Rising sea levels caused the Nile River to become a ria as far as Aswan, 900 kilometers from the modern Mediterranean coast. An estuary is an incursion of the sea into the coast at the mouth of a river due to the subsidence of part of the coastline. It also caused the isolation of many Mediterranean islands such as the island of Crete. However, the formation of the Strait of Gibraltar prevented animals from crossing between Africa and Europe during this period. On the other hand, the Gelasian or Gelasian period begins 2.5 million years ago and ends 1816 years ago. The Pleistocene climate was a succession of glacial cycles, which means that there were periods of glaciations, followed by others in which temperatures increased, known as interglacial periods. This continued throughout the Pleistocene until the last glaciation, known as the one ended. Much of the planet was covered with ice, approximately 30% of the planet was permanently covered with ice during this epoch. The Pleistocene was a geological epoch that, for some specialists, should be known as the Ice Age. For others, this denomination is erroneous, since in the Pleistocene a series of glaciations followed one another, between which there were periods in which the environmental temperatures rose, known as interglacials. As far as fauna is concerned, the Pleistocene epoch saw the success of large mammals such as the mammoth, mastodons, and the megatherium, which practically dominated the landscapes of the planet, their main characteristic being their large size, which is why they are known as megafauna. During the Pleistocene epoch there was not much activity from the geological point of view. The continents were practically already in the positions they occupy today. Even areas that today are submerged under the sea were on the surface, forming bridges between continents. Let us remember that there were interglacial periods. As far as flora is concerned, life during this time was quite diverse, despite the climatic limitations that were observed with the glaciations. During the Pleistocene on the planet there were several types of biomes, restricted to certain areas, so that the plants that developed were those specific to each biome. It is important to note that many of these plant species have survived present day. A biome is the set of ecosystems characteristic of a biogeographic zone that is defined on the basis of its vegetation and the animal species that predominate. During the Pleistocene the human species began to develop into modern man.